Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Chris at the 971 Lounge. In case you haven't tuned in before, the 971 Lounge is a podcast and YouTube channel started by myself and a few of my friends out here in Dubai. We're all expats, we're all British, and we've all been here mm, about four years plus. And basically it's just all about engaging with our people and our wider network in Dubai from um, business to finance to relationships to current events. You know, Dubai has got a great um, entrepreneurial and startup culture. A lot of people are trying to do their own thing. A lot of people are hustling and we effectively go in there, interview these people, get to know them, invite them onto the podcast, explain a little bit more about their business and promote it that way. So I'm making this video, five things I wish I knew before I came to Dubai. Come to think of it, I actually have no idea why I moved to Dubai. But like a lot of people I've sat down and spoke to, um, it's one of the best decisions I've ever made and I certainly don't regret it. And there are a few things I wish I did know before coming here which would have made the transition of moving out of my home country a lot smoother. So the first thing for me is how affordable Dubai can actually be. Like there's no secret Dubai is effectively a playground for the rich and famous. The skyscrapers are crazy. The Michelin star restaurants sell the pengers food. Supercars, you see them all the time. Like you're literally surrounded by supercars. World's biggest building, world's biggest fountain, world's biggest mall. Five star hotels, seven star hotels, bruv. The place is crazy. However, it does not need to be this way. And the thing is, when you actually move into a new country, you're moving there for work. You're not coming here for the glitz and glam. You're actually coming here to live a normal life. But obviously, I didn't know that Dubai could be affordable. And accommodation is normally the most expensive thing. When I first came here, me and my boy shared a room. Like, we literally, we were paying 3,000 dirhams, which is about 600 pounds a month. And we were sharing a room in a house share. We shared a room, a flat by the way, an apartment, which was shared already. About six men all up in this tight ass space. And we were just there thinking, rah, this place is expensive. At that time, we didn't know that there are areas in close proximity to the central areas, which are actually a lot more affordable. Had we just known about JVC, a 15 minutes drive from the marina, um, we could have had a whole room, a double room with an ensuite for the same price that we were just sharing a room in a shared accommodation. Other affordable areas similar to the JVC are JVT, Sports City, IMPZ. These are all the ones that are close to the marina. Our Basha is quite affordable, but yeah, there are other options in case you're looking for somewhere to rent and the prices are looking a little bit too mad. Another thing that makes Dubai quite affordable, there's an app called The Entertainer, which you can download. It gives you two for one, um, no matter where you go, as long as it's on the app. And it can give you two for one on drinks and on food, on spa days and hotel stays. So take a look at The Entertainer. Ladies, of course, Dubai is renowned for ladies nights. Girls do not pay for any. If you're a girl and you're coming to Dubai, you literally don't even need to bring your purse mate. Don't bring it. It's not just because guys are gonna pay for everything, but also because um, there's a series of ladies nights. There's actually a website. All you need to do is go online and type in ladies nights in Dubai and there's literally gonna be something going on every night where girls get a free deal. And this goes for beach clubs, for clubs as well, as well as just restaurants and stuff in case you don't wanna drink. If we let the ladies come for free, then who's gonna come after them? All the guys are gonna come and spend big, do big, big dollar. So if you're a guy, unfortunately, that's not gonna run. Although there are a few men's nights, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend. All you need to do is type in men's nights to buy as well and you might find something there too. So yeah, the buy can be really affordable. The second thing has definitely got to be the heat. This place gets hot because everyone thinks they felt heat until they've been to Dubai and felt a heat. Me and my boy came here in June when we first moved to Dubai and that's simply because we didn't understand like the difference the heat actually makes. June, July and August, the average temperature is around 30 degrees and it peaks around 50 degrees. That's half of what water boils at. The sea gets up to 40 degrees. Like when you go to the sea, it's not even refreshing it feels like a bath you need to be going into a pool if you're going outside don't think about going to the shop in summer if you have to walk outside and walk to the shop you won't make it these times we were working in real estate and i was wearing a shirt like this boy the sweat patches it's not a sexy time to come to dubai even if you're trying to come on holiday um the thing about summer is a lot of the things you want to do are going to be quite limited a lot of the clubs close because they're open roof 
everything's just indoors instead of being outside that's not making the most out of dubai like going to the desert would be hugely uncomfortable if not impossible anytime between september and may is fine winter months are december january february where the temperature is around 20 degrees on average which is actually really nice and quite cool all clothes however you can wear a jumper at night you can wear a t-shirt at night it runs another thing i'd suggest just being conscious of before moving to dubai are the laws it is under sharia law although they're not policed very heavily um, the laws do exist and if you do get yourself in trouble if you do cross the line on anything the penalties are quite severe it's maybe like just go online and look up some of the laws and regulations around being in dubai one thing that stung me quite a lot was was speeding tickets like speeding tickets killed me in the uk i had a car and I used to speed all the time. Never really got tickets. I was living in Birmingham and some roads, the cameras don't even work. Here, all the cameras work, brother. All the cameras work, but you're done. You're done. The tickets start at hundred pounds and they go upwards from there, depending how far above the speed limit you are going. When you have a rental car, the rental car company will demand that you pay your tickets straight away. So if you mount up two tickets, 200 quid or something like that in a week, you're gonna have to pay that by the time you know you finish your lease with the rental car company so make sure that you're careful on the roads uh, make sure you're careful in general it's the type of place where a simple slip up can see you on a flight back home or even worse in jail and we don't want that for any. before i definitely have to mention how multicultural dubai is like literally there is every single nationality out here living in dubai and i'm from london which is quite multicultural itself but you know coming to another city and seeing even more different nationalities being represented. There are a lot of Filipinos in Dubai and there are a lot of Indians and these communities are very strong. Like there's so many of them, as well as that there are a lot of Brits. So if you are coming from the UK, I wouldn't worry too much about feeling like you're stepping out of your comfort zone because the place has such a thriving British community and British culture. And there's actually a Facebook group called Brits in Dubai and they share a lot of information. I mean, everyone that's British is on that page. You have to just answer a few questions to prove you're British to get on the page. But once you are on it, it's great to sort of ask questions and get that British perception and perspective. Well, there are um, these groups on Facebook for other nationalities too. So just go on there and check. I like being in a place that's multicultural because then you don't feel like a minority as such. You just feel like part of something that's a lot bigger and it's a beautiful thing. The last thing I'd like to mention is uh, I just wish I knew people when I came out here. I feel like it would have relieved a lot of pressure and streamlined a lot of things. I spent a lot of nights in Barasti because I didn't have anyone to tell me where the R&B and the hip hop was at. I spent a lot of money on flipping, speeding and parking tickets because I didn't have anyone to tell me, you know, how important it was to stick to the rules and not catch fines. I would have saved a lot of money on rent if I knew about the more affordable areas. Just been a little bit wiser, you know, when you make decisions, when you're moving around, when you're trying to understand something. Like one thing that did help is I did come here with my boy, so I wasn't on my own. Knowing someone, I think is quite invaluable. So if you do know anyone, even vaguely, there's nothing wrong with just reaching out to someone, asking them a two-two question because some of this information is quite hard to find online. And if you don't know anyone at all, feel free to follow at 971 Lounge on Instagram like we're quite responsive on the dm if anyone's got any questions about dubai needs any guidance or anything like that please feel free to message us and i mean cool it's what we're here to do and that's what this video is for add into that forum of information about dubai i hope you've enjoyed this video like subscribe all them ting there follow the page follow my page and let us know if you have any recommendations like to hear us talk about or what you'd like to see a short video like this talk go about. get some chicken man come man a bit hungry and that, you know what I mean?